From the insanely destructive Wither to the terrifying Ender Dragon, Minecraft's got bosses. How you doing everybody, it's me, the Guide King, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the best way to beat every boss in Minecraft 1.19, and so, if all goes as planned, by the end of this video, you'll feel like you can conquer everything, and you maybe even get a girlfriend too. So technically speaking, when it comes to official bosses, Minecraft still only has two, the Wither and the Ender Dragon. For the purpose of today's video, we'll take a look at some almost bosses too, beginning with a literal pig. To check out our first and potentially most dangerous baddie of the day, it's over to the nether for us. Once we're inside of the nether, we'll need to find a very specific structure. Inside of the structure, there's like tens of these things. The piglin brood is going to be easily the most dangerous mob you'll find naturally spawning in your world. If you're not careful, these guys can like three shot you. It's not good. When it comes to supplies, as goes for dealing with any type of piglin, gold. Unfortunately for us, gold isn't going to be enough to trick the defender of the bastion but it will stop the other ones from caring about us. I recommend a gold helmet. Because of the strength of these things, you're gonna wanna have some good armor on you too. Now the biggest lifesaver when it comes to the Piglin Brute is easily gonna be the boat. What I recommend doing before you take on your Bastion is put your gold armor on and then take a look at the side of the thing. Find somewhere where you can enter this thing easily and look out for the Piglin Brutes. As soon as they have a line of sight with you, they're gonna get mad at you and try and charge at you. The best, safest, and easiest way to deal with a charging Piglin Brute is a boat. Drop a boat down in between you and the Piglin Brute, and it'll get trapped. After that, as long as you don't get too close to it, it won't really be a problem. Jump a couple times, swing your sword, and it's gone. However, you gotta watch out for the other Piglins then. As soon as you take a Brute out, the other Piglins know, and they swarm. In the ideal world, you don't get too close to the Piglin Brute. The farther you can stay away from these things, the better. Piglin Brutes make eye contact with their eyes. As long as you can stay away from that red line and the blue line coming out from it, you might be able to stealth by these things. If you're looking to stealth your way through a Piglin Bastion, then it's a great idea to bring some boats and keep the Piglin Brutes inside of those boats until you're done with the Bastion. Once you're about ready to head out of this place, swing back around and take out the Brutes. Brutes Boats, don't forget it. It's an absolute game changer. Our next stop today has us in the deepest depths of our overworld. Next up, we need to talk about Minecraft's newest, definitely not a boss, that is absolutely a boss. The strongest thing in the game by far, the Warden. So look, the easiest way to deal with the Warden is to literally not deal with the Warden. Thankfully, when it comes to this thing, you don't necessarily have to experience it. If you're careful enough inside of the ancient city, you'll never summon one of these things in. But if you've done that and accidentally gotten it in, well then the next step is to still completely avoid this thing. The sonic boom attack in specific, it's deadly. When it comes to dealing with our good friend the Warden, of course we don't want to deal with him. Armor will help, but I mean, this thing is still insanely strong. Even with the absolute best fully built up set of netherite armor, <laughs> you're, you're still a joke. The secret here for this one lies in avoidance. Having a beefed up bow, and maybe even a couple supplies for a distracting trap, great idea. There are a couple other really, really good ways to take on the Warden. I talked more about it in this video right here, but for today, let's talk about the trap and the bow. For the trap, we're gonna need a skulk sensor next to a trap door. We're gonna need another skulk sensor nearby next to another trap door. If we set these things up, they're gonna go off, like, repeatedly. If we can get away fast enough, the warden won't be able to smell us, and if it can't smell us, it'll get distracted by this trap. Check this out. <laughs> Not so smart after all. The one con to this method is the fact that the warden is gonna kind of always be staying over there, though. If the warden hears a vibration, it can't crawl away. If you've summoned a warden in and you really must take it out, get far away from this thing. Like, as far as possible. Probably your safest bet is gonna be on top of this thing in the middle of the ancient city. Then grab your bow, with hopefully power 5 at least, and start taking the warden out. If you can take the warden out from a long ways away, that's gonna be better. Again, I, I just really maybe don't recommend fighting the warden. Really, generally speaking, not a good idea, but if you can stay like more than 50 blocks away from the thing and take it out, the sonic boom, it won't be able to hit you. It has a limit. Again though, when it comes to the warden, the best strat here is to literally not see the warden. If you summon this thing in, quiet down and get away. Get very, very far away. Our next boss is the first official boss of the day. The king of the nether, the wither. Except you are actually literally chronically insane if you decide to take the king of the nether on inside of the nether. That's a terrible idea. You'd also be insane if you decide to take the wither on up in the open, on the surface. That's a terrible idea too. 
There are actually plenty of different wither strategies out there, but for today, we'll be focusing on the best of the best. And for the best of the best, we need the end. But first things first, find a stronghold. Once you're inside of that stronghold, explore it until you find the end portal frame room. Once you're inside of the end portal frame room, go ahead and open up that end portal frame and jump into it. Once we're inside of the end, we're going to have one boss in the way, but uh, keep that thing in mind. We'll come back to it later. For now, we'll just go ahead and uh, <laughs> speed things up a little. With the big bad ender dragon gone out of the way, we can actually take on the wither without any risk at all. When it comes to the supplies you're going to need for this method, there's some extra building blocks and a pickaxe for sure. When it comes to the weapon, <laughs> this one's a joke. Like, literally, you could use your fist. You're also, of course, going to need your wither spawning ingredients. So move into the end and find that central end portal frame. We need to set up a small room underneath this end portal frame. To do this, pick a side and start digging down. The side doesn't matter at all. The size of the room down here, that does definitely matter. If this is your first time pulling off this method, I recommend starting by clearing out all of the space underneath the central frame. Meaning that when you're done with digging this room, we have a room that is three blocks tall underneath this end portal frame. Now we need to find a specific block, and that's going to be this block right here. We're going to place a temporary block, a temporary block, then a permanent, a permanent, a permanent, and a permanent right there. Then we're going to go ahead and remove these blocks right here. Now, next up, it's time for the soul sand. If I've done this all correctly, when I place these wither skeleton skulls in here like this, the wither will pop up and be standing straight up and down under the middle of this frame. Now, the wither's going to charge up and kind of like do its explode thing. I recommend taking a step back, but once it does that whole explosion and gets noisy, it's going to like throw a fit and, and be trapped here. The wither is literally taking itself out right now, but we go ahead and speed things up with a sword. Be careful. I don't recommend standing too close to it. Now, uh, to be honest, uh, using a warden sword, it's a little lame. Instead, what we could do is use this beautiful Smite 5 Netherite sword right here to speed things up. Using Smite 5 and Netherite, look at the amount of health I'm taking out. It's insane. These aren't even critical hits. This is by far the easiest way to take out the Wither and get that sweet, sweet Nether Star. And it's like <laughs> literally a joke too. You don't even need armor. If you like that one, do me a quick favor and drop a like. Now let's talk about something rare. This next one is almost a tribute to like <laughs> younger me or something. I used to think these things were like literally boss too. We're going to talk about the skeleton trap. For those of you who don't know, the skeleton trap is a relatively rare Minecraft mechanic where during a thunderstorm, a group of these guys can get summoned in. Now, uh, sometimes they kind of fight amongst themselves, but other times you won't be so lucky. I do want to get it out of the way, however, that by far the easiest way to deal with these things is to literally have them fight each other. They have pretty strong bows, so be careful, but to have them fight each other, all you need to do is really like line a couple of them up. It's inevitable that one of these skeletons accidentally hits another one, or, you know, maybe it is a little bit inevitable. The best way to deal with a skeleton trap by far is with armor on and probably a bow. By using a bow, we can stay nice and far from these things. A decent sword with smite could help too. So first things first, we're going to need to wait for a skeleton trap to summon uh, sometime in a thunderstorm. Go ahead and walk up to the thing it's going to summon in. With your bow, aim high. The higher you aim, the better. The lower you aim, the worse. Obviously, the goal here is to keep the skeleton horses. It's the only way to get them. To keep the skeleton horses, we need to only take out the skeleton. If you're having trouble with this one, maybe turn on bounding boxes. With the bounding box on, we can see where the skeleton actually is. And check this out. With the bounding box on, we can see the head is way up there. So as long as I hit way up there, there we go. Easy as that. Another option here would be raw speed. When they jump in and with your smite sword, if you can quickly just land crits on the skeletons and take them out, then, then the skeletons are taken out. You see how easy this is. It's really not bad. If you keep your cool, won't be a problem. Finally, Minecraft's first and main boss, the Ender Dragon. To take on the Ender Dragon, if you've never done it before, I... Honestly, honestly, this should probably be a guide of its own, but in short, you're going to want to be careful. I recommend having at least diamond armor, especially if you've never done this before. Feather Falling 4 on the boots is a big one. Dragons will sometimes shoot you into the sky. That'll help. A good bow. A good bow is definitely secret to beating the dragon, and probably a decent sword too. The dragon has a lot of different attacks, so you're going to need to watch out for this thing. By far the most dangerous one, in my opinion, is the charged one. The charged one will bump you and send you flying into the sky. But real quick, before we get into the rest of the action, definitely some building blocks, maybe some golden apples if you have those, and slow falling potions. Slow falling potions are a game changer. Some people like to use water buckets, but if you have slow falling potions, you don't really need water. 
so again, this could be a guide of its own, but step one, move into the end and take out the end crystals. The end crystals at the top of these pillars are actually regenerating the dragon's health. With these crystals gone, the dragon won't be able to regen. Watch out for the fireballs the dragon spits at you. The best and safest way to take out the crystals is with a bow from the center. If you stand near the center and dodge the dragon when it shoots fireballs and charges, taking out the crystals shouldn't be too bad. The two caged crystals can be a little bit annoying. You've got two strategies. Either tower up and break it out yourself, or with a bow from the corner, shoot into the thing and blow it up. Until you've taken out every single end crystal, completely ignore the dragon. Uh, other than like watching where it is and dodging it. Don't bother shooting at it. Every once in a while, the dragon will land at the center. This is when you need to watch out for this thing. After a little bit of time, it'll find you and charge at you. You can dodge the dragon by stepping to the side or using an ender pearl. Before the dragon charges, it's not a bad idea to drink a slow falling potion. If it sends you into the air, you'll fall slow. And even better, if you fall slow, you will not take any fall damage at all. So anyways, take some time and take out all the crystals. After you've taken out the crystals from the center of the island, do your best to try and hit the dragon. Again, turning bounding boxes on might help you a little bit if you're having trouble. The dragon has a lot of different smaller bounding boxes within it. You're gonna have to hit the green ones. Now, just like taking out the wither, there are so many different methods. The bed method might be a little bit faster and maybe almost easier, but it is also a little bit more dangerous. With a good bow and decent accuracy, this shouldn't take too long, though. When the dragon lands in the middle, you can actually run over to it and deal some damage too, if you wanted to do things that way. Watch out for the dragon, though, because after that part, it will charge, and when it charges, you'll go flying. Long story short here, though, accuracy, patience, and bows. For a more complete and strategized Ender Dragon Guide, leave a like on this video. With enough time and patience, you'll toast that dragon. It'll be gone, and the rest of the end is yours to explore. The easiest way to beat five of Minecraft's most dangerous mobs. <laughs> there we go, that does it. Hopefully this helps you out. Smash like for more guides like this, and if you did like it, check out my Minecraft tips and tricks playlist next. Playlist will be on the end card. Inside of it are the tips, tricks, and hacks you need. Thank you all so much for watching. It's been me, Waddles. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.